I loved Pokemon as a kid. From Pokemon Red and Blue on the Game Boy Color to Diamond and Pearl on the DS, Game Freak's classic RPGs are some of my favorite games ever. But there's no denying that Pokemon's magic wears off once you get older, due to the franchise's simplistic gameplay and easy difficulty. Several developers have attempted to iterate on the franchise for an older audience, with some being more successful than others. But Cassette Beasts is the first project that succeeds in bringing the classic Pokemon formula into the modern age. A team of two indie devs identified five weak points of Game Freak's outdated formula, fixed them, and created the Pokemon evolution you've always dreamed of. <laughs> Leveling is an unavoidable part of Pokemon. You'll spend the majority of your time in a Pokemon game fighting battles, as that's the only viable way of training your team. This process is one of the pillars of every Pokemon game. Leveling up your Pokemon, having them unlock new moves, and even evolve into a new form can be very satisfying, but it is also inherently flawed. Pokemon's leveling system stifles any kind of creativity in building teams. Swapping out one of your Pokemon for one you caught in the wild is, in most cases, simply not worth it. You lose all the time you spend gaining experience for that Pokemon, and you have to spend even more time leveling up the newcomer, without being sure you'll keep them in your team in the first place. The smartest and most efficient way to play Pokemon games is to stick with your original team, unless you're in urgent need of a certain type. Game Freak eventually realized this. In newer games, experience sharing is the default option. Experience you gain while fighting will be shared across all the Pokemon in your party, cutting down on a lot of grinding time. But this change also makes Pokemon games way less interesting, because it's very easy to become overleveled, making any fights you encounter a walk in the park. Cassette Beasts introduces a solution that is as simple as it is brilliant. The game literally flips the script, letting the player character be the one to level up instead of their team. If you think this change makes battling less interesting, think again. The stats of your beasts can still increase. By letting them fight, they gain stars. If a beast reaches the 5 star rank, you get the option to remaster them into a new, more powerful form. This is essentially the same as a Pokemon evolution, but faster, giving you access to way more evolutions in way less time. These leveling changes keep the battles engaging throughout the game and let you freely experiment with whatever lineup you want. Combat has been retooled significantly, allowing for deeper and more strategic fights. For example, your character fights alongside one of various companions you meet throughout your adventure. This allows for setting up some crazy combos, called fusions, where two beasts fuse into one giant creature. Impressively, because any two of the 120 beasts in the game can be fused, the said beast features no fewer than 14,000 different fusion forms. Each character also has their own health bar. If an enemy drains one of your character's health, you'll have to beat the fight with only one beast at your side. This also works the opposite way. With some strategic hits, you can end the fight early by depleting the opposing trainer's health. You'll have to keep your health bar in mind during wild battles as well, because in cassette beasts, you don't catch monsters, you record them. To record a beast, one of the characters has to expose their health bar during the fight, making them extra vulnerable. Recording a beast is way more involved than catching a Pokémon, and you'll have to carefully consider the potential risks and rewards. Cassette Beasts further mixes things up move-wise. It does away with the standard 4 move slots per Pokémon, and the TMs that delete both themselves and a previously learned move. Instead, each beast gets 8 slots for moves, which come in the form of stickers, and can be freely applied and removed as many times as you want. There are other changes too. Attacks are either melee or ranged, and can be buffed individually. AP is not a static resource anymore but it accumulates per turn. You'll have to decide whether or not you want to use it for a weaker attack now, or save it for a stronger one next turn. The element types, another staple of the Pokemon formula, have been drastically expanded as well. Cassette Beasts contains 14 different element types that interact with each other in a realistic way. Fire is perhaps the best example of this. By casting a fire attack on a water type, you'll create a healing steam that lets it recover some health. Attacking an enemy plastic type, meanwhile, melts the plastic turning it into a poison type and making it take temporary damage. Casting fire on an ice type will turn it into water, burning a metal type will cause extra melt damage, and so on. This is an ingenious way of expanding on Pokémon's beloved battle system, while retaining that what made it so popular in the first place. 
Pokemon games are of course not only about the battles. A core part of Game Freak's RPGs is the feeling of adventure, exploring the world and talking to its inhabitants. Cassette Beast does not disappoint on this front either. While most entries in the Pokemon franchise are very linear, Cassette Beast plays more like an open world Metroidvania. You're able to dash and jump from the get go, and by recording certain beasts, you'll unlock new abilities. These abilities build on the foundations of Pokemon's HM system, but are bigger in scope. Each ability does not just provide you with a way forward, but changes how you can interact with the parts of the world you've already discovered, encouraging you to revisit areas to find hidden paths and chests. There's no need to waste the sticker slot of your beasts either, because these abilities directly apply to the player character. It's clear that Cassette Beast has more influences than just the Pokemon franchise. The companion system is inspired by classic Bioware RPGs such as Mass Effect. By letting your companions tag along, you'll deepen your relationship with them. Companions have personal quests to complete, unique dialogue trees, and some can even be romanced. Completing these gives you extra powers and abilities that help you during battle. All these features are accompanied by Cassette Beast's stylish presentation. You won't find any ugly pop-in or low-res graphics here. The game mixes the chibi character designs from the classic Pokemon games and the 3D overworld of newer entries, while the tilt-shift filter makes it feel like you're interacting with a diorama. Of course, a game called Cassette Beasts wouldn't live up to its name without an excellent soundtrack, and that's luckily the case here. Some of the songs even transition into a version with lyrics as a battle reaches its climax. This gives fights a certain epicness that Pokemon's catchy but ultimately monotonous battle music is unable to reach. Cassette Beast is the first indie game that isn't content with merely copying the Pokemon formula. The developers weren't afraid to put Pokemon's more dated design elements into question. This resulted in a game tailor-made for Pokemon fans and those who tired from the franchise. Game Freak, it's time to up your game. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see how a different indie dev outclass Nintendo, click this video to discover why Pizza Tower is a better game than its inspiration Wario Land 4. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content on indie games, and let me know in the comments what you think of Cassette Beasts. See you next time!